Glenn, first off, congratulations. Um, can you take me just through your, your last kilometer? You know, you had to catch someone to win, kind of what your thought process was and, and how you just kind of powered through that. Um, yeah, so we, we raced this course in March of 2021 and then we jogged the course yesterday. So I knew like with about a K to go, um, there's still like a, a, a few uphills. So um, I kind of tried to time myself. So when I made the, the it was like a sharp right hand turn to a, an uphill. And then once you complete that uphill, it's a turn to the finish. So I wanted to catch Parker by the time I hit that sharp turn to the uphill and then use the uphill to kind of um, gap her a little bit so I could kind of finish strong on the downhill finish. Anyone else want to raise your hand? There we go. Mike. Hey there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Cool. Mike Solarte, Spectre News One. Congratulations. Uh, what, can you kind of talk about the team aspect of uh, of your group and what, you know, how that kind of maybe pushed you all to, to be as successful? Yeah, we're a, a really tight knit group. Um, we really kind of all buy into the team aspect across country. So I think it really, helps us a lot when we race because we try to find each other and work together and we kind of all do it for each other. So yeah, cross country is um, very team oriented for, for us. So um, we kind of go into every race with the mindset that we're doing it for each other. Is that, I mean, it is though, essentially, I mean, it is a, an individual sport to a degree, you know, everybody's running, to, but you're all running against the clock. So how is it, how is it that you guys can, uh, or really what really brought you guys together as a group to run as a team uh, to take the individual side out of it and everybody's still, you know, going, going after the success? Um, yeah, so I guess the best way to contribute to the team is to do your best individually to score as, as least points as possible. Um, so, yeah, that's what we were kind of talking about before the race is like every person you pass is plus one for them, minus one for us and the team score. So, um, yeah, individually you have to perform. Um, the best you can in order to contribute to the team score. Jonas, I don't have a video. Can I get in here? It's Nancy from the Journal News. Yeah, I'll get you in there. Uh, go ahead, JC. Okay. Is there Was there anybody in the race that you kind of wanted to run off of? And then how much do you think your track background helps you in the last mile or two um well obviously how the race played out um parker from florida kind of took it out so i guess she was the person i was kind of doubted on the whole race just because she was in the lead um by quite a bit and then yeah i think the the strength you know we always say like track helps with cross country cross country helps with track so um our training is pretty similar year round just because we're you know the track season training for 5k cross country is 6k so um similar amount of volume like weekly mileage and stuff but yeah i definitely think like having like track speed helps with uh you know that last finishing stretch in cross country i'll oh, go with uh bill i saw you physically raise your hand earlier and then kate thanks hey caitlin congratulations um, with the alumni magazine. And I'm just curious, was there, can you talk about your, I assume you're already back on campus and you talk about your return, anybody here to greet you? Um, yeah, so we chartered back from Stillwater and we went straight to the bell tower uh, where we were greeted by, um, you know, some fans, the rest of the team, uh, the cheerleading squad was there, the band was there, um, some administration staff. So yeah, we got a nice, warm welcome um, when we got back to campus at the bell tower and um, it was an honor to receive the key and open it up for the girls to go in there and kind of experience it because it is um, a really big deal here at NC State. Yeah I'm also curious how quickly will you get back out running how quickly you turn this around? Um, yeah we're still training we had practice this morning um, we have another race um, in two weeks so an indoor race that we're training for before we take time off. 
So how far did you run this morning? Um, today we had um, an eight mile run with some strides and a cool down. So we got close to like 10 miles total probably. Okay, well, thanks. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kate. Hey, Caitlin, um, I'm new to the area. So I was reading up about your background and your journey as a runner. And it sounds like you were uh, quite the runner in high school. So how did you take this pressure from high school, you know, being number one, finishing these big races and channel it into this collegiate career? Because when I was reading, you know, there's this kind of myth or it's possible sometimes that athletes can peak in high school and not have the same success in college. So how have you made sure that wasn't your story to, you know, not be successful at this level? Um, yeah, I definitely did have a lot of pressure on me in high school and then it kind of carried into college. But I think um, what helped me adjust the best was just coming to NC State and being surrounded by um, a great team culture and having um, a coaching staff and administration staff that really care for me and kind of helped me with that transition and I think having like a team that performs so well kind of takes pressure off you individually so yeah and going off of that um you've had success at NC State clearly I watched you in Eugene I worked in Eugene before this but I saw you win the 5,000 in Eugene so you have an outdoor title you have now a cross-country title and now next up is indoor What's your mindset approaching a new season? Um, yeah, it's the same as every season, I guess. Just um, perform as best as I can at the championship meets. So, um, yeah, indoor NCAAs, I think, is in the beginning of March. So, um, yeah, training kind of starts gearing towards that. So hopefully we can run some fast times and then um, perform well at the, the championships. And I don't know what event I'll do, but hopefully uh, – we can get a relay going or something like that. And lastly, you're playing at like Calm Cool Collected. I don't know if you don't like the Zoom. We're talking to a bunch of us strangers, but what is it about track and what is it about racing that fuels you every every meet that you're out there? What keeps you going? Um, I think especially in cross country, it's just the team because um, you know they're giving, they're all for you, so you kind of have to return the favor and. Um, like I was talking about before, we all buy into that team aspect of the sport. So, um, yeah, I think just having teammates that I'm surrounded by every day kind of pushing me and um, inspiring me is kind of what fuels the fire. Gore? Caitlin, I may have missed this earlier, but I wanted to ask you about the team aspect of everything. Obviously, you guys, you finish first and then you turn back and you're seeing everybody cross the line. At what point did you realize that, that you guys had won a, a national championship again? Uh, it, was there a specific moment where you saw and kind of felt that, that, uh, that joy of, of knowing that you guys had won a team title too? Um, yes. So I didn't know for a really long time. Um, I was the last person to know because they, um, someone kind of told me I needed to like go do an interview so like he took me away to go do that and then um I was just like putting on some warm clothes because it was like really cold and then he took me back out to where he wanted me to do the interview and then I I saw coach Hennis and I was I asked her I was like did we win she was like yeah and then I ran over to the girls and they already knew we won so I was kind of like the last to know um but yeah it was really exciting I I really had no idea just because um New Mexico's spread was like so short. So they had five in before us, um, but we still won, um, you know, the team score, obviously. So I, I thought it was going to be a lot, lot closer than it was just like seeing at the finish line, but it's so hard to, to tell because there's just like hundreds of runners coming in. So yeah, I was I was the last to know, but I was really excited when I, I saw the whole team waiting for me. And another thing for you, what is, you talked a little bit about Coach Hennis, but what has she meant to you and what has she meant to this program as a whole as well, you know, in having the type of success that you guys have had? Um, yeah, Coach Hennis means a lot to us. Um, she's definitely one of the most notable coaches in the NCAA. Um, yeah, I think we're really lucky to have her just because obviously she she knows what she's doing. She's been coaching here for a while. She's loyal to the program. And she just genuinely cares about each and one of us as individuals. So, yeah, um, we definitely lucked out with Coach Hennis. <laughs> Thanks so much, Caitlin.
Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, you got a follow up? Yeah, I just had one, uh, one more. I mean, just kind of going through your accolades and has it sunk in as to how decorated of an athlete you are in terms of the NCAA and the ACC? And, and, and I guess, what do you do for an encore? Cause you still got a senior season to go. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's really kind of like sunk in. I think after each race, I'm kind of just like, go oh, on to the next. So maybe in a few years from now, I'll look back and realize, but yeah, I kind of just like, once I accomplish one thing, it's kind of like, all right, what's the next goal? So, yeah, I think they'll obviously keep running fast, keep winning. Um, is kind of what the encore would be for next year. Thank you very much. Matt? Yeah, I had a couple of questions. One, uh, individually speaking, you were such highly touted and highly decorated out of high school with the path to the the top of cross country in college, was it what you expected to be? Was it harder than you expected it to be? Or what was that journey like coming out of high school with those expectations to get to this point? Um, yeah, I think the goal always going out of high school was to win a team title, which we accomplished last year. And then I also wanted to win an individual title and then which I accomplished this year and obviously won the team title again. But yeah, it definitely wasn't kind of linear trajectory is kind of you know there were some ups and downs some injuries in between um but yeah the NCAA is just super super competitive so um yeah I never I don't know I never really thought that I would maybe like win this as a as a junior I thought maybe my senior year but um yeah it's super cool just because like how competitive the, the NCAA has become and then yeah, like I said, kind of had some ups and downs. So I think that's just how everyone's kind of career goes. It's never, it's never easy. So, yeah. Then from a, a team aspect, what was the mindset going, you did win the national championship last year. Were they openly talking about repeating a champions or was it new season, new year, new goals type? Um, yeah, our coaches always kind of preach like new season new goals they always say like no one's going to take away the trophy like it's in the trophy case from last year like it's a new season new people so obviously there's a lot of chatter about like defending the title and we kind of do had we did have that pressure on our backs but yeah we kind of looked at it as like a new season like forget about last year and kind of going in with that like underdog mentality um nancy i know you had some issues earlier do you have a question Unmute you here. There you go. I, I want to, hey, Caitlin, I wanted to ask you some of the people who are now your teammates used to be rivals here in New York. How, how much does it help to have a runner like Chelsea to train with, for instance? And how much did it help you in the race to ha not have her and also have Parker Valby in terms of just uh, put? pressure to run but also a good pressure maybe to run um yeah I wouldn't really I don't know I guess you could say Kelsey and I were rivals in high school but we always kind of had mutual respect for each other and um yeah I love training with her she's a great person great teammate so um I love like when I find her in a race where she finds me and we're kind of running together um yeah it just makes it a lot easier just because like you know we we know that we're we're trying to help each other out during the race. So having her definitely helps push me. And then, yeah, having Parker in front of me kind of gave me a target to try to chase. So it kind of made the race go by fast while I was kind of kind of stuck in no man's land there for for a while. Let, let me ask you, you know, so many kids opt uh, to go professionally and from from the beginning you wanted to go to college. What do you think you've gotten out of the NC State experience so far? that you would have missed out on had you gone pro just out of high school? Um, yeah, going pro out of high school was never in the conversation. Um, you know, people always make their their own theories and stuff, but yeah, it was something I never considered. I always wanted to go to college. Um, and yeah, if you ask any like professional who went through the NCAA system, they'll tell you like there's nothing like 
um, college cross country. It's just like the atmosphere is crazy, especially at the championship level. Um, and yeah, having that team aspect is something you don't have really at all. When you're a professional, um, you know, pros don't even run cross most of the time. So yeah, I definitely didn't want to miss out on NCAA just for the cross aspect and the team aspect of it. You, you had said that you're going to be running in two weeks. What, what race is that and what distance are you doing or do you know yet? Um, yeah, we're going to Boston. Um, I don't know what the, the meet's called, but I'll be running the 5K indoor at Boston. Okay. And then just lastly, you know, um, your old North Rockland team lost the signal going up and they were trying to watch you and root for you on the bus. And uh, for what it's worth, Somers told me they were screaming for you on the bus, et cetera. So a lot of your old uh, area section one friends and foes were, were behind you. But right after your race, your brother, who's a freshman, you know, took 27th, which is phenomenal in uh, feds. And what, you know, I know that he was trying to get a hold of you. Um, how special was that day for you and your family? Um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, the parents had to split up. My dad came to my race my mom went to his race and you know my mom got to watch at home and then head in the car and go to Ryan's race so yeah he's been killing it um even my older brother's been running a lot with Ryan and then when I go home you know we'll, we'll get some miles in together so it's really cool that the whole family's kind of all bought into to running and yeah I think Ryan's got quite the future ahead of him so I'm excited to, to train with him he's uh yeah, he's going to be good. He's going to be faster than me soon. So I'm excited for that. Okay. Thanks, Caitlin. Go ahead, JC, and then David. What what led you to NC State? Like, what was it about the recruiting process that made you want to pick the Wolfpack? And then also, what is it like? Because you seem to be uh, more low-key as a personality, and yet you have 89,000 people who follow you on Instagram. What, what is that like for you? knowing how many people watch, you know, whatever you post? Um, yeah, so I think the people is kind of what made me want to go to NC State. Um, I really like the team culture on my visit. Obviously, I already knew Kelsey from high school and a couple others. So, um, yeah, I definitely wanted to go here just because I knew I would fit in with the team and I would be happy. And then um, having Coach Hennis as the coach was definitely favorable for NC State just because, you know, she had a – has Elliot, her daughter, who who won the 5K in track um, the year before I did. And then so she knows what it's like for females, distance runners to go through the NCAA at like elite level at this day and age. And then her herself was a runner. She won nationals when she was in college for NC State and then ran professionally. So I think her perspective was, you know, very unique. And there's not a lot of coaches in NCAA who has that many lenses as she does. And then yeah, for Instagram, I don't, I don't really know why I have so many followers. I don't post very often. I, I don't think my posts are very good, but I guess people want to see it. So, yeah. Go ahead, David. You know, just judging by the amount of coats that Jonas was wearing in Oklahoma, it looked like it was extremely cold. Um, how did that affect your race and how do you sort of stay warm before you know these kind of runs um yeah it was pretty cold but luckily the wind kind of died down and the sun came out so it wasn't as bad as it seemed I think um especially when you're running a race kind of heat up but yeah before the race we kind of just throw on a bunch of layers and you know do our jog and make sure we're, we're warmed up well and then I wore hand warmers during the race to keep my hands warm but that was about it for for extra clothing and um tools I guess And Bill, you want to get the last one? Sure. I was just curious, Caitlin, where do you keep your growing collection of medals and trophies? Um, yeah, I definitely have quite a few. Um, the ones that mean a lot to me, I, I hang up, but the rest kind of go in the attic or in a storage unit. Um, yeah, I, I don't, if I'm being honest, a lot of them aren't very pretty looking, so <laughs> I don't really hang them up in my room unless they mean a lot.